There's a new technology coming out in the web space. It's called Module Federation, and it's part of the upcoming Webpack 5 release. It's got engineers really excited, so let's talk at the high level about what it is and how you can use it. So below are two applications. The first is a homepage application that shows you a bunch of Pokemon, but has a really cool Pokemon carousel. Over on the other one is a search page. It allows you to search Pokemon, and what we want to do is also show you that same carousel from the home page. So let's try this out with Module Federation. Now I've already exported the Pokemon carousel from the home page. Now I'm going to go over to the search page and go and import it, and then put it into the React layout. Now I'm going to refresh the page, and it's up and running, which is great. Now let's go back over to the home page, add a little bit of a border, and now we can refresh it. And in both spots, we see that we have a live sharing scenario, which is awesome. Now, in reality, both of these applications might be run by two different teams in a microsite architecture, right? You've got the home page team and you've got the search page team. And sharing code between the two, in particularly live like this, isn't something we've had a really ab a good ability to do in the last couple of years. So let's talk about some of the different sharing methodologies that we've had so far and how module federation is different from those. So the first one is node modules. In this model, what we're going to do is take that Pokemon carousel, we're going to extract it, we're going to put it into its own project and repository, and then publish that. And then the two home page and search page applications are going to consume that module and then deploy it the next time that they deploy. Now that's really great, it's super safe. It means that both the home page and the search page are absolutely complete when they go to production. There's no runtime sharing, so there's no way that they could break after they get deployed, which is great. But the downside is that it's a slow and laborious process. To make a change, an engineer has to stop what they're doing over in home page or search page, and then go over into that Pokemon carousel project, make some changes, get that published out, then go and talk to the engineers over on the other teams, get those to get published out. It's just a, a lot of work to do to get changes out. And it creates a lot of friction, which slows things down and basically ends up kind of putting a damper on sharing. Another option is to use a, a micro front end framework. And in that model, again, we would extract the code for the Pokemon carousel into its own repository. And then we would go and publish that to something like Amazon's S3 service. And then both of those applications would then consume it and would get the runtime updates. But you've still got that friction where when you want to go make a change, you got to stop what you're doing in the homepage app and then go and go into that new project, make the changes, get that published out. And then you get to see the sharing and you know, so it's a little bit less friction, but it's not completely gone. Now module federation is really cool. We can go and make a change in the homepage application to that Pokemon carousel, as we've seen, get that published out and then it automatically gets consumed by the other application at runtime, which is great. But that also comes with some runtime risk. Let's go break this thing. So we're gonna go over to the homepage and just add four characters, so it's gonna break React, and then it's gonna break both applications. Now that's not what you really see in production. More than likely what's gonna happen is an engineer on the homepage team is gonna make an, uh, a change, it's gonna work in the context of homepage, but it's not gonna work in other contexts because there's some different logic in there. So there's a risk, but there's a huge upside. Another big thing that people are really excited about when it comes to model module federation is the return of the a single page application or SPA. So when your site is small and it's running off of a, a single server, single application type system, uh, then you can go and do what's called a single page application, which means that on the client side, you're gonna do the routing as you maneuver from page to page, which is really fast because as you go from page to page, all you're doing is just grabbing a little bit of uh, API access and making a few calls, getting some new data and moving it around. We lost that when we went to microsites because uh, having pages you know, done individually means that getting them all, those all unified was problematic. So 
this is really cool. Now with module federation, we're bringing back the ability to go and runtime share the different routes and create a, sing, a spa type system, but we're still keeping the ability for teams to move independently and deploy independently. So it's the best of both worlds. And that's another reason why engineers are so excited about it. All right, well, I hope this introduction is giving you some insights into what module federation is and why it's important. Um, if you like videos like this on advanced front end topics, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel and hit that subscribe button. Click on that bell and you'll be notified anytime a new video like this comes out. And of course, your questions and comments are always welcome in the comment section down below. And in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.